Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are, and welcome to this tutorial on proxy editing with Shotcut for beginners. So many of you may have never done this before. Um, what is proxy editing firstly? It's when we take high quality video, like 4K videos, and we edit them in a lower resolution so that it's a bit kinder on the computer. You can play about with effects and still preview it without having to keep rendering it every time. Um, and then at the end, you switch all the videos out and without affecting your timeline, all of a sudden, ta-da, everything's in 4K and you can showcase it to YouTube, your friends, your mates, etc., whatever it is. So everything, um, all the software in the used in this video is going to be open source so that it's all free to download and use. And I'm going to be using um, Windows 10 for, uh, for installing this. So first things first, there's two pieces of software we need. The first one is Handbrake. Now what Handbrake does, it's an open source video transcoder. So it allows us to take our 4K videos or 1080p videos, um, whatever, you've, whatever you've recorded it on your, your phone, your GoPro in, and render it down to something a bit lower that we can work with to actually edit the video. Don't worry, obviously we bring it back up later. That's what proxy editing is, back to the 4K. But if you download this, it's um, again, it's free, it's open source. So just hit download um, and install that one. That's the first piece of software you'll need. And the second one is Shotcut itself. Now this is the, the video studio that I use um, throughout this tutorial. Um, it's brilliant, it's free, um, it exports in 4K. So it's all, you know, it's got all the tools you need. It's pretty professional and from beginners all the way through to advanced, it, it caters for pretty much everyone. So without further ado, let's crack on. So the first thing you want to do is find your video files. So go to the folder where they're stored. So if for this tutorial, I'm using um, some video that was shot on a GoPro. Uh, it was shot in 4K, 30 frames a second. Um, and here are here are the files. So it's in, in my Alex GoPro folder. Now, one of the things I'd highly recommend is to create three folders. So the first one's going to be called LQ. And that's going to be low quality. So that's going to be the videos that we're using to proxy edit. The second one is high quality. And that is going to be our, like our original files, the ones that you can see here. So I'm going to copy all of these into the high quality folder. I'll move them all in there. And then the final folder that we're going to create is going to be called VE, which is video edit. Some other people, or say some other people, sometimes I like to call it UHQ, which is ultra high quality for like the final, uh, for the final thing. So now we've got those set up, we're going to open Handbrake. And you'll be presented with this source selection screen. Okay, so you can open a folder or you can open a file. First thing we want to do though, is it's not quite set up right, is press cancel here. Go Tools and Preferences, uh, Output Files, and here we need to set up the path of to the LQ folder, folder to the low quality folder. So if I go to Browse, I'm going to go Center Parks, Alex GoPro, and Low Quality. So you just click the folder and select folder. So what this does is when it's rendering down the files, it'll put all of its output files in this path. The other one that you need to do is this file format should just say source. You might find it has like source brackets title or source dash number of some sort. If you put this as just source, it means it duplicates the name of the clip. And that's very, very important. It's very important that the names of the new clips that are lower quality are the same as the old names of the old clips. Okay, so if I go back, that's now done. And we can go open source folder and now you navigate to your high quality so this is where all our original source files are hit select folder and shotcut or sorry handbrake sorry will now scan through scan all of the titles and it will determine the frame rates the quality of them um, if there's any titles any chapters subtitles different cameras put in um, different like different added things so it might have extra audio tracks it might have subtitles it might have chapters etc so I'll quickly skip the video forward to once this is finished so we don't have to sit and painfully watch it and I'll see you all soon.
Right, so once it's done, you'll be presented with a, a preview of your first video um, out of all of them. And this screen here. So what we've got is a, a variety of different tabs. So we've got a summary, so it'll show the format that it's going to render it down to. Um, you've got a few extra options. You've got web optimized, um, iPod 5G support, etc. Um, but most things we're going to leave pretty standard here. So the preset I tend to use, this generally depends on your computer speed. Um, for like more mid to top end, you can, well, mid, mid to top end computers, I'd use fast 720p 30 frames a second. Um, it keeps the same aspect ratio. It works quite nicely. You don't have to set anything else up. So all, I, I tend to um, suggest trying that one first. If, or even very fast, 720p down the bottom, um, if that doesn't work, I'll put some extra resolutions you can set up that are even lower than these um, because you need to keep the aspect ratio the same. Um, and I'll pop those in the comments section um, or the, the video description below. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to be using this very fast 720p 30 frames a second. Um, there's only a couple of options that I recommend you change. Uh, first is, in fact, you can click through them all for a quick look. Um, but first, under subtitles is I'd remove the subtitles entirely. You're not going to need them for doing uh, video editing and shortcut. The other one is chapters. I tend to not create chapter markers because again, you're not going to use them. Uh, you'll notice you now get a little modified pr on the preset here because the standard preset has chapters. Um, once you're done, check down here that it's saving it to the right place so alex gopro low quality and the video name and that's that's the original video name which is a different location and then when you're ready press this little drop down here add to queue add all and give it a minute and it will think about it or it will go not responding nice here we go so you've now got 88 in the queue you can click on it you can see them all going as soon as you're ready, hit start. Now, this will take quite some time, um, depending on the speed of your computer, of course. Um, it's quite processor intensive. However, what I tend to do is set this going before I go to bed, wake up in the morning, job done, everything's there. It means I'm ready the next day after work to just straight away kick in and start video editing. It does show you how long's elapsed, the time remaining of each video. That's note this each video, not the total queue. Uh, and you can see the percentage flying up there as well. So again, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna sign off for the moment and we'll come back to what we do with the end result. Okay, so as we can see our queue is now finished. All of them have got a green tick, so everything has happened successfully. So now that's done, we can close the queue and we can close handbrake. One of the things it's advisable to do is go back to our folder and just double check. Got the, there we go, it's our high quality originals. Dunk. And then double check all our low qualities as well. And just open one of them up and make sure, there we go, that they play okay. Make sure you play okay, they've got sound, as you can see. The aspect, well, the aspect ratio is the same, but the video itself is a lot smaller because it's now 720. So the next critical thing to do is to copy all of our low quality footage. So control C and paste it in our video edit folder. And this is part of the proxy editing. So what we're going to do is we're going to use these low quality videos and we're going to import these into Shotcut going to edit with the ones in this folder and then later on when we render it down we're going to paste the high qualities over the top and then render the video and what shotcut will do is it only thinks in a single file path so it will be looking in c videotech d gopro video edit so if you change the file as long as the file name hasn't changed from low to high quality it doesn't know that it'll just go okay brilliant it's high quality now no problem and that's essentially what proxy editing is uh, but I'll, I'll show you that in practice and we'll, we'll go we'll go through and uh, run through it. Okay, so there we go. So we've got all of our low quality videos in the video edit folder. So now we've done that, um, it's a very good opportunity to set up any additional files you might want for your video. So for example, any sounds or any music files that you might want. Um, what have we got? So if I copy this Ben Sound Dreams, uh, go back, we'll just pop that in here. 
Um, you can create a sound effects folder if you're going to do lots of audio track things, but if it's just the one that you're going to use, we'll just pop it straight in the top directory. So once you've done that, go back to your video edit folder and minimize that window. So now we can open Shotcut. So if you just type it on your start bar and open it up. Right, as you load in Shotcut, you'll be presented with this new project and recent project boxes. Now we're going to do a new project. So first of all, select the file path here for the project folder. And you're going to choose the folder where you've put your HQ, LQ and video edits. In this case, it's already in the right place. So Alex GoPro, I'm just going to choose that top directory. Now, Shotcut will create a folder here for you to store all its own files in there. Next thing's a project name. So we're going to just give it Center Parks 2019. And then the video mode, this is crucial. So this is the final video quality that you'd like to export. So for me, it's 4K, which is 2160p at 30 frames per second. And for you, it might be higher, it might be lower frames per second. You might just want to do 1080p. You don't have to, if you've done all of your footage in 4K, for example, you don't have to do the final export as 4K. You can do it as HD 1080p. And there's certain scenarios with special effects um, where you may wish to do that. Because it means you can actually scroll around a video where 4K is much bigger than 1080p. But I'm going to stick with 4K at 30 frames per second and press start. The third thing to mention about Shotcut is its layout. You'll be presented with this default layout screen, uh, but it's 100% customizable and you'll, you'll eventually come to a, a, a layout that you like. So if you go into view, you've got all these different toolbars here that you can enable. I'd highly recommend at properties, uh, playlist, you'll definitely need playlist, um, export, and jobs and the way you move these around they come in tabs on the bottom uh, some more tabs over here so we've got the recent and the jobs we've got a huge preview plane in the middle little audio meter and the timeline along the bottom but for example you can take this properties um, box and you can drag it around and it will snap to different locations so i quite like having um, properties in between the two so it means I can have all my files down here and I can, when I click on one, I can see the properties of the file and then preview it in the plane. And um, say for the jobs, you can add them onto other tabs. So there we go, as an example. You can drag things around as well to make them smaller and larger. And eventually you'll play about with this layout and, and customize it as you'd like it. Once you've got it there, hit view, layout, add, and then just give the default an, um, a name. So you might call it my layout or my first layout or something along those lines. I'm going to use um, Alex layout, da, 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 which is pretty much what I just set up um, as this is this is just my, I, uh, my default go to. So now we can get to importing our videos. So if you select playlist down at the side on one of your tabs, wherever it may be, open up your video edit folder, make sure it's the video edit select all your clips and just drag them across now one of your clips as they import will start playing um, and as soon as they've imported dunk oh apparently i've got an upside down one playing lovely and this is the preview plane so as a, as i've um, explained about the layout you, if you select a clip it will show you the clips properties so you've got speed duration uh, the codex and um, audio um, and all the different metadata for the clip as well um, and then you're in your preview plane you've got the source and the project view now source view is whatever you choose from your playlist so when i select each different one of these it comes up in the source it means you can crop clips move clips edit clips before you put them onto the timeline which is your project view Okay, there's a lot of tutorials around on how to actually use Shotcut itself, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, uh, but I'll give you just a very quick um, rendition of how to do how to do like a very short short video. So if you've seen this bit before, feel free to skip forward into um, to export in the video, and I'll put a link in the description to the time code that that is. So for those of you sticking with me, um, the first thing to do is if you come down to your timeline, right click and just add a video track. And this is what we're going to use to put all of our nice cropped clips on. So in our source view, I'm going to start with some paddle boarding. Um, here we go. Let's use uh, this 11572. 
So if we hit play over here, we can get a preview of the video. And you can decide, perhaps I don't want all of this clip. So the way we shorten this down is just to drag these white markers across. So you can choose the, the white arrow for it, see where it starts. I want to start without arms in the way. So perhaps, probably about there will do. There we go, come across. Get a few seconds of that. Oh, it looks like we're going to look at the ducks. Fantastic. And then I think that would be a nice chance to fade out. So if we pause the clip there, we can drag our other end across. And we're ready to put this on the timeline. A couple of ways you can do it. The plus and the minus. The plus does append the clips to the current track. So it will drop it on the end of wherever uh, wherever the, the um, time code marker is. Or you've got these arrows, which will add or overwrite the clip onto the current track wherever the pointer is. So the current track selected by the yellow or the blue. See so if I add oops, have another video track, you'll see I can select between the two. So video one, we're going to drop the clip down. And there we go, there it appears. Now you can also edit on the timeline as well. So as you can see, it's now automatically jumped to project view for us. And you can drag and drop these clips as and when you need, so they can they can shift around. You can it's very versatile as you, where you want to put them. So what I'll do is I'll come back up to here. Notice the white marker here marks your video position. And if I was to go to one of our other clips, let's take some uh, some cycling. Why not? Here we go. If I pause this, you can see that this project view, if I go back to it, is still exactly where I left it. So I can edit this clip and go, right, I'm going to crop from about there-ish. Cycling along. Dun, 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 dun. And we'll pause there. I'm going to say, right, crop this back. Put our little marker here. We can jump to the end. Once we're in project view, we can jump around using these and we can fast forward by holding down. So we're going to jump to the end of our first clip, go to our second track, back to our source view and put it on the track. There we go. Now, to keep this short and sweet, I'm just going to put the two, two videos in. Um, to fade a clip in, we can either add it as an effect or the easy way is if you hover at the end of a trick, track you can get these little black dots and you can just click and drag so when I go back to the very start the video now fades in and you can make that fade longer or shorter so we go let's have that as a bit of a longer fade fantastic if you wish you can fade between videos as such so it goes all the way to black you can overlay them so then it will fade between the two or not in this case it won't Oh, my apologies, it's because it says over. So the best way to fade between clips, if you wish them to crossfade, is put them on the same track and drag them together. And you'll get this crossfade effect. Now when you play, it'll fade between the two. There's a lot of different ways of doing things in Shotcut, as I said. So the reason it jumped to black there was because if you select track two, the blend mode is over. I think if you select add, it will instead put them together um, and where it's fading it would be fading to transparent so it will fade nicely between the two again a lot of different ways of doing the same thing so we can do a little fade here and it will drop down and come back in off to cycling fantastic everyone is happy um, as with earlier so we can go back to our folder we can grab our audio track and drop that in there we go and we can just drop that straight onto the bottom track and then crop it to the right length. There we go. So we'll fade in the audio as well, bring it to the end and we'll fade out the audio. Fantastic. Um, while you're with me, um, I will show you, if you click on tracks, you can add filters. So we can add different types of, if I put the track in the middle, 
So perhaps you want to go video, um, you might want to drink, change the brightness, you might change the contrast, um, you can color grade things, so you make it look a bit warmer contrasts um, if you wish for it, or a bit greener, or like bluer, it, it, it depends what you want to do with a video essentially. Uh, you can actually copy all of the effects on one track and paste them by selecting these copy and paste here um, so that you don't have to duplicate loads and loads of tracks. Alternatively, you can select a video track at the start and put clip, um, oh, excuse me, put effects on the whole track. So, for example, you might wish to um, make the whole track like, kind of grayscale. There we go. Or different brightness all the way through. Dun, dun, dun. Right. So now you've got your video. We've got our video. We're quite happy with it and we'd like to export it. Oh, very summary. Now exporting is relatively simple with Shotcut. The first thing you should always do is, oh, I have to enable my export view, which I've turned off. Uh, the first thing you should always do is export it with the low quality videos. So you're just going to come into the export here. It will already be set up as a H.264 or an MP4 file and just hit export. So I'm going to just drop it straight in our top directory. You'll get the jobs box come up. Let's add this to over here. And it'll give you a little time as to how long it's going to take to export the clip. Note that when you're doing your low quality videos, it will be significantly quicker than when it's doing the high quality videos. Ah, the power of video editing. So open up your directory and double check that your clip has come out as expected because you don't want to render it in high quality. So that looks to me as I expect it to come out. Excellent. As you'll see, the quality is a bit naff. It's designed to be about that size with the, uh, with the preset we used. Now for the proxy part. In this case, I've only actually used two videos, but just to demonstrate, I'll, I'll do the process you would do if you're doing the whole, um, if you use you know, all your different ones for your holiday and you want to wow your friends, fantastic. So if we go back to Shotcut, save, um, save your file and close Shotcut. Then what we do is we go to our high quality video folder, copy all of the files and we paste them into the video edit folder. Notice copy and paste, not move. And it should come up with destination as 88 files or however many files with the same names. Replace the files in the destination. You want to make sure that the, name, the files have the same names. If they don't have exactly the same names, it won't work. They've got to have exactly the same names. So I'm going to quickly skip forward on this one um, so you don't have to sit and watch it copy painfully across. And I'll see you in a second. Welcome back everyone. So our videos are all now copied in and are all now the high quality 4K videos. So if we open Shotcut back up and then in our recent projects we should have our center parks. Double click and you'll now notice that if I hit play on the project view the quality is a hell of a lot higher. Now for some of you with computers that aren't perhaps as fast, it actually might struggle to run the video. Um, I'm quite fortunate to be running on quite a high powered computer. Um, but with my old PC, this is why I had to do proxy editing was because once I'd got 4K, I could not play the video in Shotcut. It would be laggy, the sound would be out, and eventually it would just give up and go, nah, sorry mate. So what we do is we come into Shotcut, we don't need to play anything. All we need to do is go straight to export and hit export file. So we'll call it Send it Box 2019 HQ, save, and off it goes. Luckily, we've only got 26 seconds. However, I'll perform some video magic and done. So again, just hit save, close shortcut, and go back to your main folder where you've saved it. And what we can do is, if I turn this volume right down, this is our low quality video. And then if we open up the high quality, you'll notice straight away that we've got the full resolution. 
And that's pretty much the most of it, really. So if you now wanted to edit your video again, you could, depends on how powerful your computer is, if it's a small tweak, no problem, you can do it with the high qualities, or if you want to do something more substantial, you just copy your lows straight back over the top of your video edit folder. And that is pretty much it. So thank you very much for sticking around with me. Um, if you've got any comments, if you want any other videos doing, let me know. Obviously, this has been an introduction to doing it, um, as in proxy editing with Shotcut. Um, but yeah, any questions, let me know. Comments in the description, no problem. See you later, guys.